So recently, Porsche unveiled what they call the Tri-Wing S91X Pegasus, which is the result of a six-week collaborative process between the designers at Porsche and the art department at Lucasfilm to design a Starfighter for Star Wars. I was following the process since they announced it, and I was interested to see what they would come up with. And the results were, well... Okay, that's really just not a Star Wars design. Honestly, it doesn't even really look like Porsche design either. So I thought it would be a fun little project to reinterpret this ship into a familiar design language, kind of acting in the role of an art director who says, okay, you've got a good basic shape and some cool ideas, but let's just take the final step to make it into a proper Star Wars design. Now, I'll share more about my design itself in a bit, but first I would like to talk about some of my baseline thought processes as it pertains to Star Wars design. Now, I understand that Star Wars exists in a pretty broad universe. It encompasses a number of different styles. Even in the very first movie, virtually no two designs looked alike. There was no prescribed layout that ships were expected to follow. But even though a TIE fighter and an X-Wing have virtually no common features, they inhabit the same world effortlessly. So what makes a spaceship inhabit the world of Star Wars? And what makes the Porsche design, in my opinion, just some spaceship? Well, part of the problem is that the Porsche ship is designed in a way that seems kind of unaware of the sort of world that Star Wars is, because it looks like a futuristic aircraft concept. By and large, the spaceships of Star Wars are not futuristic. A long time ago isn't just poetic license. It informs the feel of the entire world, from the hand props to the vehicles. And when you really look into it, you'll find that most Star Wars designs have some kind of basis in a real historical vehicle. Which brings us back to the Porsche Pegasus Fighter. If you look at it, what sorts of vehicles does it evoke? In essence, it looks like a futuristic car glued to a modern stealth bomber. Honestly, the designers weren't shy about admitting that they literally cut and paste different designs together to get this spaceship. So I don't think the glued together characterization is unfair because it's actually something they're kind of strangely proud of, but it's not like it yielded an ugly ship. The design is pretty cool looking, but that's not the point here. The point is that it fails to capture the essence of what makes Star Wars designs work and fit together in the same universe. The more I look at it, the more it looks like something from Star Citizen, which obviously is not an insult because those are cool ships, but it's not the look you should be going for if you're trying to make a Star Wars design. Now, despite everything that I've said about the historical basis of designs in Star Wars, the shape of this fighter isn't a problem in theory. It's just a missed opportunity, because not every Star Wars design has a historical counterpart, but I think it still needs to be detailed correctly with classic industrial components and not futuristic ones. For instance, Star Wars doesn't really favor these insets and unattached, thin, overhanging panels. Even the more flowing and organic designs in Star Wars favor solid shapes and simple lines. Not these sorts of razor-sharp elements. And for what it's worth, all these little sharp bits aren't really a hallmark of Porsche design either, which makes this ship all the more confounding to me. But overall, we can use an authentic Star Wars approach to detailing to really push the Porsche design into the correct world. Of course, much of the shaping itself needs to be reworked first. And to do that, I went back to the original design brief that the designers got for this project. Doug Chang's challenge was to combine an X-Wing, Y-Wing, and U-Wing with the Porsche Taycan. Canonically, as an interesting side point, the ship would appear to be designed by Incom, which means in addition to the X-Wing and the U-Wing elements, it opens the door to Skyhopper and Snowspeeder aesthetics as well. I figured that the original design basically didn't accomplish any of these points, so I gave myself a little bit of freedom as well. Because yes, it could easily be argued that my ship doesn't have too much Porsche Taycan in it, or Porsche at all. But if we look at the original design, aside from the headlights and the taillights, which are honestly kind of blatant and goofy, it doesn't have any explicitly Taycan elements either. Now, the cockpit area does evoke an automobile, but it's so vague that it could resemble any number of cars. 
And ultimately, it doesn't really evoke the X-Wing or the Y-Wing either. In fairness, there is a little bit of U-Wing in there with the spread of the wings, but I think that we can do a lot better. I knew that I wanted the hard geometry characteristic of Incom ships, but I also did want some of those softer shapes to give some recognition to the Porsche origins. So I decided to unify these two aspects with a rounded, sloping, core structural element that was soft and automobile-like on the leading edges and sharp and industrial on the trailing edges. Ultimately, this shape would fan out to encompass the engines, which are virtually the only other explicitly rounded parts of the ship. By having the sharp edges overlap with the rounded ones, we can effectively blend these elements, creating a more unified appearance. The central spine of the ship, which includes the cockpit, is shaped like an inverted X-Wing fuselage. That is, instead of a long nose and a stubby aft end, we have a stubby nose and the aft has been elongated. I took the X-Wing canopy, enlarged it, and rounded it off to communicate a tiny bit of Porsche flair, which I borrowed very vaguely from the rear windows of a number of different Porsche models. One thing I did leave off was what is perhaps the only Star Wars element on the original Porsche design, an astromech droid, and that was more of a public statement rather than an artistic choice. The very fact that the Porsche designers apparently thought that they needed to include the droid is, to me, something of an admission that the design doesn't really work. So I intentionally left it off of mine to demonstrate that the design should look Star Wars without any blatant placement of a familiar element. Oh, I also introduced folding wings into the design to give the ship a smaller landing footprint. And while it's a common element on Star Wars ships, I don't think that they need an articulated element, but it did seem like an appropriate choice for a ship with such a large wingspan. But that's really all I have to say on the issue. Porsche designed a pretty cool spaceship. I'm not going to pretend that they're inept or something, and I don't want anybody to think that that's what I'm saying. But I do think that the design misses the mark, and it falls short of what I would consider a Star Wars design. Is my redesign a better ship? No, I'm not saying that at all. But I do personally believe it fits the original design brief much better than the ship they designed. But I'll let you guys decide the verdict ultimately. I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Angelos Carterinus, who as usual provided the absolutely stellar renders of my ship for this video. Honestly, 50% of how these ships look is just how they're lit and rendered, and he does an excellent job. I'd also like to thank the nearly 160 amazing patrons who support my work every month on Patreon. You guys help make this channel economically viable, and I hope you all know how much I appreciate your support. And to the rest of you, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.